hello everyone again. So um, first of all, thank you for your interest and thank you for joining this meeting. Uh, my name is Elsa Stalidan. I'm International Relations Specialist. And uh, so we are here today to talk about master programs uh, with Eva Zemit, uh, who is um, head of program Creative Industries and Growth Management, and uh, uh, Elena Wickman, who is uh, head of Cultural Heritage Governance and Communication. So um, I will start with a um, short introduction about what is Latvian Academy of Culture and, um, and then my colleagues will continue and uh, they will talk about the uh, master programs. So, okay, I will share the screen. So can you see it? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. So yeah, Latvian Academy of Culture. So, okay. So uh, Latvian Academy of Culture is established in 1990 and we are more than 600 students and uh, more than 2,600 graduates since uh, its foundation. Uh, we also have uh, two artistic collectives, two centers creative uh, uh, activity center and research center. We also have two museums, film museum and uh, theater museum. Uh, then we also have uh, three buildings for our school. The main building is at Lodza Street and then building uh, in Zirnevo Street for a theater and also a film school in Elias Street. Um, then we have um, uh, 120 partner universities and in, in 28 different countries and also mentor pro mentoring program or mentoring team for incoming foreign students. So about education. Uh, the Latvian Academy of Culture implements bachelor, master and doctoral study programs. Most of them are bachelor studies. So we are having, for example, culture and art studies, intercultural communication, stage acting, sociology and management of culture, uh, contemporary dance, audiovisual art uh, and creative industries. Some of them are for three years, some of them are for four years. And uh, this is example of what people are studying in audiovisual art, uh, for example, film directing, film editing and sound and so on. Then here's the master studies. You already know cultural heritage, governance and communication and creative industries and growth, growth management. Uh, these are in English. And then we are also having uh, these two master studies, uh, the arts and uh, audiovisual and performing arts. And also doctoral uh, studies, the arts. So, uh, when we think about studying process, it's not only about studying, it's also about the environment. And I would say that we are really, really happy that uh, we are having this big yard uh, next to our academy. So this is the place where usually people are uh, going to chill or uh, like uh, to chat with each other, to uh, sometimes also do some homework and um, also having lunch. And so, yeah, it's like really nice place um, that uh, that we can use uh, for like relaxing and uh, things like that. So yeah, here's the three three buildings. So uh, Luzo Street um, uh, building in Luzo Street is the main building that we are having. Uh, then uh, building in uh, Dirnev Street is more for uh, actors and also I think some dancers. And uh, building in Elias Street is for audiovisual studies, so for people who are making uh, movies and films. And uh, about international mobility, uh, we are having um, Erasmus Plus, uh, North Plus uh, program, and some others. And I would say it's really, really uh, important uh, for our students because. Uh, so people are studying, for example, cross-cultural studies, for example, Latvia, Germany, Latvia, Spain, Latvia, Italy. And so for people, it's really important uh, so they can go to another country to improve their language skills, to improve other skills. 
And so, yeah, this uh, international mobility is really important for our students, but also it's important for foreign students because I have uh, I was talking with uh, some Erasmus students who are studying uh, here in our academy, and they told me that Riga is actually a really unique place where to go, because when you think about traveling or studying, you, you kind of never think about Riga. So Riga is this unique place where, where you can go and feel really different than other countries or other, other cities. And I would say that um, what I have heard from Erasmus students that they're saying that uh, our university is unique because we are a really small university and people can reach professors really easily and they can have like they can communicate with professors uh, so it's like I would say really big advantage that we are not huge school but we are small school and you always can have like professors uh, closer to you than uh, other universities then yeah we also have this research center where uh, people are researching in various thematic fields like theory of culture, history and theory of arts and literature, and, and so on. And also um, they're having uh, different projects, different uh, research projects and, uh, and international projects. And yeah, that's it. You can also, if you need some information, you can find us in Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, also YouTube. And also, we are having this uh, our academy, this web page, where you can also find uh, all the new information there. And yeah, right now, I think I will uh, I will give the word to uh, Eva Zamite, who will talk more about uh, creative industries and growth management program. Thank you. So now I'm prepared to talk a little bit to give you an overview of our program, which is creative industries and growth management. So it's a joint master program, master study program of the Latvian Academy of Culture, Riga Technical University. Speaking about content of the program, I would like to say that uh, it's focused on your personal, on organizational, and also global global level of the growth management. And it's created uh, by Stanford University professor Carol Dweck, um, which exactly is uh, responsible for this uh, in concept of uh, growth mindset. And uh, we implemented this growth mindset com uh, concept into elements of growth as personal, organizational, and this uh, wider perspective as a global level of growth. That's a very important part of your like personal, professional growth. Uh, context, of course, is creative industries, and our aim is uh, to train strategically minded and creative change implementing leaders, uh, which are capable to lead growth processes and uh, of course value and applied diversity. Uh, creative industries, as you are, I suppose, are informed, it's a quite wide range of sub sectors. And I would like to turn to this uh, culture framework where we can see 10 cultural domains and six functions and whatever you can find your personal uh, challenges, uh, way of working, also your professional challenges as well as organizational ones and also all the ways of uh, implementing some new ideas, new projects and uh, new collaborations within this field. Uh, our students 
our students will get this uh, set of knowledge and competencies, speaking about developing this growth thinking on a personal, organizational, and of course, it's very, very important nowadays that it's global level as well. And we will, we will suppose to um, promote an understanding of the potential of creative industries and the importance of those cultural values, which can change and will be one of the driving forces to change a uh, global economy as well. Then the question is why directly Latvia? And uh, I would say that it's important that our surroundings and environment is very helpful to think and uh, stay locally, but still thinking in global perspective. And also we are uh, quite open-minded that uh, you will get uh, support from the leaders of organizations uh, that they are ready to cooperate, that they are ready to make new partnerships and uh, to gain those uh, new knowledges, knowledge you need for a better understanding of creative industries and working worldwide from here, from Latvia. And of course, one more important issue is also Latvian state scholarships, which, it's, uh, which are provided from the state, Latvian state. To speak a little bit about the content of study program, uh, I will quickly design how it's organized and uh, compulsory study courses are made in three uh, modules and those three modules are uh, culture and creative industries, business and growth management. I will tell about a little bit later uh, directly what kind of study courses are in um, are here. Uh, so then comes uh, field specific study course, and uh, there are two main themes, and those are basics of business and arts discourse. And the uh, third blog, uh, third part is uh, compulsory elective study courses as well as master thesis. And as for the last semester, you are really just and only writing master's thesis. To start with the first module and uh, speaking about culture and creative industries, here you can see three study courses, development of creative industries, branding and reputation management in creative industries, and strategies, uh, strategies and context uh, for the conceptualization of art. And uh, here you can see we have a like what wide range of international professors. Uh, I have mentioned just some of them here, but uh, it's very, very important that we are not speaking just theoretically about those uh, development issues and uh, possible strategies and contexts, but we are also deeply involving professionals and those professionals of the field, which can give the latest, um, the, the most important uh, facts and figures, uh, what are going now, what's dealing, what, what, what the kind, how they are dealing with, but as for example, with pandemics and uh, how do they organize their work right now in this particular circumstances. And so there is this balance. Our program is absolutely academic, but it's covered with uh, experiences, with knowledge, with uh, suggestions, with practicalities from the field, from professionals from the field. Um, as we have partnership with Brick Technical University, then they are the ones who cover this business side. And, and as you can see here, uh, in uh, the module business, uh, marketing, digital transformation, uh, lifestyle and financial management and business modeling, all of those study courses are organized as uh, the same. First, we speak about your personal financial management as then about organizational level of financial management and third semester it's more brighter it's more sector oriented more for uh, speak also speaking about international collaborations projects and finance management and uh, yeah, here you can see as well some uh, lectures. So, sir, uh, Dennis is also a program director from the RTU. 
gross management uh, and gross management it's covered within uh, gross creative industries public speaking and contact improvisation laboratory strategy strategy and integrated talent management and research design. And also in those particular study courses, we invite a lot of professionals as academics. And uh, for example, I forgot to mention that here works also a professor from the Rotterdam Erasmus University, Franz Brouwer, uh, within study course, creative, uh, growth in creative industries where students are creating international projects during third semester. Uh, so next slide uh, about the field specific study course. One you Oh, one of which art discourse or basics of business shall be studied. It's depending on your previous bachelor degree. If you have studied social sciences, then you, you just have no way, no choice. Uh, you are, we, will, we are making it art discourse would be your study course and if you have uh, previous experience in arts or humanities like previous experience i mean a bachelor in arts or humanities then it means that you will study basics of business um, that's something we decide uh, and the program organizers where we can see that your previous bachelor's degree it's more uh, gaining like this basic knowledge and then what uh, what are the what knowledge uh, that you can have to have to there's organize next uh, next lectures and next semester study uh, themes all on the one spot already that you have gained this knowledge during those uh, field specific study courses the degree to be obtained are, is Master of Arts in Creative Industries, and I have already mentioned that duration of studies, that's two years uh, for semesters, and the last semester is just writing your bachelor degree, uh, bachelor thesis, and then uh, bachelor degree. Speaking about practicalities, uh, we hope, of course, that there someday there will be an opportunity to personally meet but uh, so far we are sure that lectures will be organized in hybrid format and that means that we will provide both like full-time lectures together with remote lecture that you can attend lectures and you should do that but if there is like situation, pandemic situation as it's at the moment, then of course lectures mostly are remote. Uh, still, we will focus on some activities as for example, some uh, joint uh, um, hackathons or some kind of uh, working uh, seminars where you should be, you, we need your presence, we need your per, uh, personal attendance, but still some, uh, some kind of lectures will be organized, this hybrid format. If you are in Riga, then you are attending those lectures. If you are not, then that means that you can just uh, uh, link through Zoom or other platforms. Admission has already started and it's open from the January and here you can see the calendar. Uh, uh, we have this online consultation today. Uh, we will have one more during March but it's important um, to schedule in your calendars the application deadline for applicants from non-EU countries uh, already it's ended uh, on 20th of March. That's very important because later you can't apply for those 
state foundation for state foundations and also um, we can't guarantee that you will be able to get a visa. Uh, the final decision will be made the final decision will be made just uh, in July. And that's very important to know that uh, the final admission is the one where we decide also those who are paying for studies and those who are state supported. Uh, and that we are doing just once and it's already July. And so study will start in 5th of September and then we are uh, welcoming you personally at the Latin Academy of Culture. More information you can find here on our website. Appropriate bachelor degrees. Uh, so it's quite wide. Uh, we select applicants with a bachelor degree in arts, humanities, social science, sciences, also engineering and technology or even also others, higher education, bachelor degrees, because our partner university as Riga Technical University also has a quite wide range of bachelor's degree. And that's mean, that's the reason why we included engineering and technology. So, for the masters of uh, creative industries and growth management, uh, the bachelor degree can be like really, really wide variety. To really get here uh, for the application for the studies, uh, there is the first part is really official part, formal part where you have to complete application form and uh, passport and then copy of your previous education diploma as well as proof of English certificate but the most important part that I'm willing to talk with you is uh, your CV and a letter of motivation of course it should be done in English but that's very important that you are uh, showing us your professional experience and your motivation for studies and like the place where are we indicating those who are studying and those who are willing to study the admission interview and the stu student's motivation it's one of the most important questions and we would like to see your motivation to study particularly in our program and of course uh, to your previous work experience and your vision of future professional development. It's very, very important concerning that our program is growth in creative industries. You should also mention your master thesis topic, but it's important to understand that you uh, know about um, issues which are important, uh, speaking about creative industries, that you are, are uh, understanding the wider context, but it's not so important that you have done already some previous research or that you are already fluent in this team. You will gain those knowledge later and it's just a part and it's just uh, your first introduction, your first motivation, your first um, impression of how your master thesis would look like. Uh, then, um, Students' understanding of creative industries, uh, global processes about business and culture. Uh, it's um, our like, privilege to test your um, assumptions, your uh, challenges, things you are uh, getting through, speaking about uh, actually issues in your own personal development concerning with uh, creative industries and during uh, or even some of um, your organization issues as well could be the topic where we can discuss that uh, why are you thinking that those studies might help you. 
And of course, additional questions like broadly on culture, creative industries, entrepreneurship, and uh, your uh, personal worldview and how you see that studies could help you to grow. grow. Uh, here you can see students have shared their impressions of the program. So those are first year students. No, sorry, second, second already. Uh, and uh, they are the first ones who tried our experiments and said that it's quite good enough to welcome you to join. And they are quite happy with the result. And uh, here are just three of them, but uh, they all look like um, so happy and uh, interested to gain more knowledge. If you have any questions, please uh, send me an email, contact me or my colleague in the RTU, Dennis. He's also a program director just from Riki Technical University. All the necessary information concerning admission you can find on our webpage, but please don't hesitate to uh, ask questions right now. Thank you. Jana, sure, please. Yes, I already have a question. Um, because I was reading through the um, uh, previous students' testimonial on the uh, webpage, and I noticed that most of them had come from the creative industries and were kind of founding something in the, uh, in the master's uh, project. So I was wondering if this program was more tailored towards people who wanted to be entrepreneurs and start something of their own, or if it's also like just a leading role in creative industries. It's a leading role in creative industries and uh, maybe it just sounds like they all are entrepreneurs and starting their own companies, but it's not true at all. Some of them, of course, are, but uh, just some of them and mostly we are speaking about our student as the one who is ready to implement their own ideas to change to grow to think about uh, new ways of how to develop and uh, or even develop their own I would say uh, from idea to projects and uh, it could be also some international corporations and just we are giving this platform to start the experiments, to start to think about your personal growth, uh, to start to think about projects where you are really interested in. And also we are providing a lot of uh, opportunities uh, to start new corporations, to start uh, experiment with uh, other fields you haven't been before working with. So creative industries, as you have seen, it's quite a wide a range of subsectors and um, we are covering mostly everything you can imagine. But it's also very privileged we have those professionals from the field. And then we have also, uh, we had uh, during, I would say that first year students, we have two, two students which are just directly from the bachelors like without any kind of um, uh, expertise from the field but they are so happy they are learning so much from their others and uh, their course mates and uh, all all those um, professional tips and tricks which are they sharing during lectures uh, that's something you can't get anywhere else thank you Thank you, Eva. And I think now we can give the word to Elena, who will talk more about cultural heritage governance and communication. Hi, guys. I'm happy to, to be with you today. So I will share some outline of our program. 
which is uh, pretty newly made uh, two years ago. And, and uh, we have now the, the, the latest tests and we're quite happy about this program. It's unique. It's the, actually the only one in the region and uh, the only one in English. And there's a basic information. Uh, we have the budget funded uh, places and I will tell later how to get to there. We have also the paid places. The overall program is for four semesters and the last semester is for a master thesis. You will get the master of arts in creative industries as well as in EVA's program. But this program is focused on cultural heritage in the broadest perspective of the, of the word you will uh, gain the practice, the internships in any cultural heritage cultural institution. Uh, for example, the National Art Museum or the Baroque Pearl, the uh, Rondale Palace, or in a small museums or in, uh, in organizations catering heritage, uh, heritage field. You can go Erasmus Plus and uh, and yes, like in EVA's program, the studies are planned in hybrid. So you can come and be here, or you can be at home and receive the most uh, you can in this uh, in these strange times. So the program was inspired by British heritage um, studies, and uh, this program is divided into three fields or three parts. The, the first part is uh, theoretical heritage studies. So you will find out everything about the heritage field, the law, the ethics, the, 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 uh, the trends of 21st century, the uh, uh, modern museology or the cultural landscape, semiotics, uh, everything, the, the heritage sustainability, the heritage digitization, anything that they like uh, uh, post-colonialism trends and urbanization and, and everything what matters at this point. And the, the second part will be the interpretation in the broadest perspective, which is uh, everything started to exhibition creation to uh, some kind of teaching aspects the integrate, uh, integrated communication, the digital communication, the heritage as a tourism tool and everything around it. And the third part will be the governance part uh, where you will uh, study such sub subjects as strategic management, the entrepreneurship, the digitization, the cooperation, the international project creation and everything around it. Uh, we uh, sometimes we we say that uh, that uh, people working in the heritage sector is uh, is like uh, soldiers. They at, at this point they have to know everything. They have to know the communication aspects, the governance aspects, and then then they 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 can uh, deep dive in the, the specific subjects, but you should know everything around it to be successful. I'm very happy to introduce the international team of professors. They are all amazing. We have like different uh, background professors. Uh, they come from here at what university or from Berlin or, 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 or um, from Netherlands. We have our own local professors who have uh, gained the degrees in Sorbonne or in other international environments. We have our highest degree staff here, like vice rector uh, teaching the uh, research design. And uh, I and I have uh, put also Eva Zemide, who is a, a associate professor here and the head of the um, uh, creative industries program. And we are borrowing her for the entrepreneurship course. So uh, we're very happy about it. And of course, we have uh, very many guest lecturers and heritage uh, professionals 
uh, both from here, from Baltics, from, from uh, every corner of the world. And, 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 we are, and we are very proud and very happy about it. And as you can see, uh, these are the latest reviews from the students. Uh, but what I would like to stress is not to read the testimonies, but rather uh, point out that they are not just working, for example, for museums, as sometimes we think. They are uh, working either the heritage institutions or cultural objects, or they are catering heritage field, either working in the state or municipal level, or they are working in the creative industries, but focusing on heritage sector needs. And, and that makes them a perfect team. And what I can see these two years already, I'm teaching them them uh, the museology and, and, and topicalities of heritage sector, that they are starting to create projects together. And that is wonderful. And then my heart sing. And I think that that, that is a perfect uh, combination when it, where, where you have outstanding professors and you have a great community so you can make together new things with it, this new thinking with your knowledge with your experience and coming from different fields and that is wonderful and they are really uh, making changes and that is something i'm i'm really happy about uh, what i would love to to talk that uh, uh, how do we admit students? And the main thing is that uh, you, you, will get, you will be going through the interview and uh, there are specific uh, criteria, and you can see the points here. And I think it's very important for you just to be prepared so that you don't come as a blank paper, you come prepared because you will be asked to talk about your motivation you will be asked to talk what kind of academic or professional you, experience you have. And it does not necessarily mean that you have to have one. For example, we have two students now at this course that uh, I am very happy to, to tell you that uh, they became heritage uh, field professionals just two months ago. And just because they entered the program, and it was their starting point. But of course, we have also the museum directors and, and, and heritage of, of, of object professionals and managers there. But I think that it's uh, important for us to see that you, that you have this sparkle, that you are interested in the heritage sector. And uh, we would like to hear about uh, potential master thesis topic. It uh, does not necessarily mean that you will have to work on it, but uh, we just would love to see how bold are you. Uh, we would love to see whether, especially if you have the budget uh, funded uh, place in this heritage studies, we would love to see that you are thinking about uh, working either in heritage sector or catering heritage sector or becoming somewhere where you could give some benefit to the heritage sector and that we could talk about the heritage field and that your English language proficiency would allow you to study in this program, to talk to your professors, to talk to, to your um, colleagues and to understand what, uh, uh, what they are uh, telling you back. Uh, two important dates. 20th of March, the deadline for non-EU applicants, and the 7th of July for applications from EU and E plus candidate states. Uh, you can have all the detailed set te technical information uh, about the application, about the the uh, um, all professors about all testimonials about uh, even myself on the web page just click the studies the admission to a national master's program and choose cultural heritage governance and you will see all the uh, sub uh, folders where you can find more 
So join us, become the agents of change in the heritage sector. We will be happy to do things together. So that's my part. We are a very dedicated community and we love, uh, we would love that uh, new members would join. And I think that uh, uh, from the surveys, the European surveys, we see that uh, cultural heritage is becoming more and more important for the citizens. And, and so that this field will be definitely growing. And we would love uh, professionals to work in a way that uh, what 21st century demands from us. So thank you. Can I ask a practical question about the program? Definitely, sure. Thank you. Um, the first question is, I would like to know the percentage of uh, how many lectures are online and how many are inside if the, the world uh, allows us to meet in person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a good one. No one knows. So the last uh, two semesters, we actually held them mostly uh, remotely, but in all cases, when we gathered, we had this hybrid format that anyone who felt uh, uh, either not well or they couldn't get there, they could, uh, uh, we have equipped uh, auditoriums in the academy so everyone could participate. Either you are in a classroom or you are remotely you can participate in a lecture. So we call it the hybrid format because everyone can participate. If we can, of course, we organize uh, like seminars in museums. We visit the art storages. We go to the castles. But if we can't, we go remotely and you all participate. If we can, and there are some restrictions. So some students will be uh, in a classroom and some will get the identical content being remotely. And the follow-up question on how often are the lectures on and what times? Mm -hmm. Thank you, that's a very important question because most of our students uh, work either partly or full-time. Our lectures are Thursday evenings, Friday evenings and Saturdays. We have lectures only in the evenings for from the four o'clock. Uh, it's the earliest. Our lectures start on Mondays and Tuesdays, only evenings as well. Also hybrid format. Those who are attending and for those who are remotely, everyone can attend the lecture. And uh, then comes Saturdays or Thursdays, it depends. And um, mostly those are evenings, just maybe sat Saturday mornings and uh, Thursday of Monday, Tuesday evenings. It depends, not from semester to semester, but uh, not more than uh, three times per week. And as a, sorry, sorry, I'm gonna, last question, sorry. Um, as a non-English speaker, I have a lot of free time and how is, I, how do I ask that? Um, can I find a job in Latvia if I'm not, I don't speak the native language? Is it possible? Yes, it is. We have a theater director, which doesn't speak Latvian at all. So it's completely possible. And uh, yesterday I spoke with uh, Italian conductor. He was so surprised. He said that uh, he's uh, really, really <laughs> uh, surprised that here in Latvia, he even could speak with a lady who gives a key for him. So it's uh, like a level of English in Latvia is that uh, we are speaking English and mostly they're in field specific, in field specific uh, jobs, there is no need for Latvian so much that you are able to find also a job. Hello, please, can I have a question? Definitely, yes. Thank you very much. 
My name is Olajide. Uh, you would have uh, seen my email troubling you. I want to say sorry about that. Um, I was just eager about the course. Currently, I am a director in a state government uh, institution, Council for Heart and Culture. And uh, I've been there for the past uh, some years, six years running now. And uh, we have been doing things the way it has been done before. I see that the, the program will help me a lot to further know uh, the modern problem solving skills that they're using in the heritage industry now. And uh, the, my question is, uh, if uh, after my application, after submitting, uh, submitting my application and I'm um, considered for admission, how early uh, is the letter going to be sent to me so that I can make my preparation from the, for the embassy stuff? Because that is, uh, that is what seems to be an Akulian task here. But the earlier, the better. So that's what I wanted to ask that. How early, for instance, after July, when admission is uh, confirmed and letter is uh, prepared, how early are we going to get it pending? Uh, the September that we are going to resume? That is my question. Mm -hmm. If I understand correctly your question, so you would uh, apply in March, you can apply for the state funded scholarship there. We will then gather all other <clears throat> applications from EU countries and we will decide till the uh, 8th of July or 18, I don't remember, sorry. The, um, the 18th of July. So when the decision is made, you will be informed via email as quickly as, I, as we can. You will not be sent like, a, I don't know, the, the letter via post office that will reach you, I don't know, in October. <laughs> So as soon as the decision is made, we will inform you and you can also uh, ask us to inform you as early as possible and in a way that is uh, the most uh, efficient way for you so that you can uh, uh, prepare yourself for studies. I'm not sure whether I, whether I answered the question, but I you did. then ask, you did. Me, ask me again. You, you did. Uh, you did. I was trying to ask about the the timing. How early? And you have answered it. You have answered it. Yes, yeah. and you can definitely uh, you can definitely ask as uh, as the for example uh, when we moved over the July, you can definitely ask us. Please, when you take the decision, uh, please inform me via email, like like in three days. Uh, when the decision is made, because it's very important for me to be prepared to ask and fund and 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 and, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So we are very understanding here, and I think that we are. Uh, I, I hope that they will agree that we are very flexible and try to cater the the, the needs of our students in the best uh, way possible. Yes, as Elsa said already, we are so small universities that we are dealing so quickly. There is no huge bureaucracy. It's um, done and there is a result and we are informing you. So, yeah, no delays just because of some structured things. Bureaucracy so. uh, issues, <laughs> some kind of. No, we, we try to avoid them uh, in a like in a, in a, in a way that they does make any additional trouble for anyone. Just one more question. I want to ask whether it is possible to just do a semester, then after a semester, I return back to my country to be linking the program via the uh, Zoom or any other, any other method. I don't know whether it is uh, acceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the question that is hardly way anyone could answer because at this point we are having already a year remotely so i uh, actually i i don't see 
the obstacles that uh, that could change that that we if we promise that we can make it hybrid then we can make it hybrid uh, we have all the technologies in place uh, now uh, we have all the experience for remote work now uh, and 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 um, the time will show mm. Okay. I agree absolutely that it, that's important part that we are like change organized a hybrid format and an opportunity to work either in personal or hybrid. Oh, uh, sorry, remotely. And even now, uh, when when somebody uh, defends their thesis, uh, we understand that uh, there can be the quarantine, there can be all kinds of restrictions and obstacles and and we do it remotely so that's the life that is fair that's fair enough thank you very much um i have another uh, organizational question as well um, because it's uh, you've been talking about the scholarships and they're on your website as well and i was wondering how easy or hard is it to get one? Uh, and what are the, or do you have any experience uh, with previous students maybe, uh, what the framework is you have to, um, you have to have to get a scholarship maybe? To be honest, we have no previous experience with those uh, state founded scholarships. Uh, we have our uh, budget places uh, where the, Paid places are paid from the state, yeah, but uh, like uh, those state founded as this, uh, that this year is the first year we will organize our programs in English. That's why we just haven't experienced uh, how long does it take, how many are applicants, and does everyone who just uh, applying gets this foundation or uh, every second or third. Uh, maybe Elsa, you know more about uh, this state founded scholarships? No, unfortunately, no. I think that uh, no one can answer this question because how uh, difficult it is to get the scholarship depends on how many uh, submissions there are and no one knows how many submissions there will be. Uh, regarding the uh, state funded places, which is uh, so you don't have to pay for your studies, uh, that's completely depends uh, on you, how well you are prepared so you get the, the higher points, the better the possibility you, you have the budget uh, uh, funded place. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually we, uh, we have eight to nine uh, budget uh, funded places. So you, the better your interview, um, the, the sure you can be that you will yeah. get the uh, the budget uh, funded place so yeah, that you don't have to pay for your studies but it depends on you rather than on us ah okay i didn't realize those were two separate things yes so yes separate. these are two kinds of uh, of budgeting one mm -hmm. that the state uh, mm, um, like uh, uh, funds your studies, but that's for the whole state, for the whole universities, all kinds of programs, and no one knows how many applicants there will be. And the other one that is funded through the academy for this specific program, and it depends on you then, that's your competition with your colleagues. And I don't have to uh, put in a separate application. No, you will tell me if I've been good yes. enough to get the place sponsored. Yes. Ah, okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. A separate application. If you want to apply for a state foundation, then it's a separate application. But uh, yeah, whether or not you are founded uh, through the academy, that means that it's, that's an application to the program, and that's it. Yes. But uh, I definitely uh, would suggest to apply so that you uh, mm. can do everything you can uh, and then uh, and, and then uh, see. So I, I think that's definitely worth to, to going through the process 
because uh, no one can tell you the answer to the question how difficult it will be. I, I don't think it's very difficult, but it just will depend on the, the amount of applicants. I, I think that uh, during these strange pandemic times, the applicant might be less because of the reduced mobility, the overall, the worldwide reduced mobility. So maybe that's the best uh, option. I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> worth a try, probably. I think it's worth to try. Yeah, and also you said uh, we have to put in a proof of English. Uh, what what counts as a certificate there? Is it enough to have uh, um, like uh, in, in schooling, or do we have to make do because uh, some um, institutions want the TOEFL certificate, for example, or a certain certificate to prove the English language? Uh, you can have the either TOEFL or other proof, or you can have a proof from your um, previous um, education. educational institution. It's enough with your previous education institution's approval as well. You don't just have to go to, to TOEFL. Yeah. Uh, because it's, uh, it's, it's not the bureaucracy from our side. We just want to know that you will be able to study in English. Mm. That that's the point. Yeah, you just have to prove it, and that's it. And if you are, for example, have studied in bachelor's already, like English language, then not like professionally, and not just like one study course, but like English language, then definitely you can apply with those documents, and that's enough. And uh, maybe if nobody else has another question, I would uh, have an, uh, one that's not uh, organizational, but uh, concerning the pro program again, um, because um, yeah, well, you mentioned uh, the topic of master's thesis that you also have to submit if you want to uh, study. And I was wondering if maybe you could share some examples of other people or what other people had in mind there, because uh, I don't know, I was uh, interested in having like something concrete that other people have uh, submitted, maybe. Yes, uh, okay. I'm just thinking at the moment that uh, we... Or maybe just the direction that... Uh, yeah, 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 for the deal with this situation, because uh, like I know that some universities are showing like uh, some uh, topics as examples that um, there are the topics you can choose from. Well, our, our way how we do is uh, just you are coming with your own research interests that you are coming with the topics which are you more interested in and of course i can show and i can share also as the topics of uh, previous students and themes they have chosen but um, that's that's more or less showing their interests mm -hmm. uh, and at the moment you also don't have to like uh, precise have precise title of your master's degree uh, master's thesis you just have to show your research interests is that is that the reason why i'm thinking and discussing with myself why, uh, but should i show you like direct uh, thesis because it's more like your personal interests your uh, point of, your um, in research uh, field where you are ready to dig deeper you know? No, let's see from that perspective. Uh, we are not asking, uh, show, to please announce your title, master's the most potential master thesis title. We are asking you a question uh, whether that's a topic, your interests, uh, research articles you are reading. Uh, so in which field would you like to do your research work? So. That could be like more the direction to understand your personal research interests. Ah, interesting. Okay, thank you. That uh, helps kind of understand 
what yes. you're looking for in this uh, direction. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We are looking to the personalities that yeah. what we what we want to see. Uh, your personality. What are you like deeply interested in? What are your uh, passion about? What are you uh, like uh, the reading? Um, what are you planning to read <laughs> in the nearest future? Like like uh, yeah, your uh, vitality. <laughs> the interest of life mm -hmm. nice okay thank you uh, maybe i can add uh, regarding the heritage sector it, it's pretty wide so uh, similarly as uh, in eva's program we are not uh, seeking for the specific title but we would love to know either you're interested in a tangible heritage intangible heritage, maybe cultural landscapes, maybe you're interested in digitization of heritage, maybe you're interested in the, the impact of, uh, of uh, heritage sector to the health and well-being, maybe you are interested in the, uh, some kind of the, the social purposes of uh, the exhibitions, for example, or expositions, uh, maybe you are interested in socioeconomic impact on the heritage sector to the wider community or wider society. So just to understand what direction are you taking? So that, that's the reason we are asking for the master thesis. We will not uh, uh, put the title on and, and, and ask you to, to do the thesis uh, you, <laughs> you applied like two years ago when, when the time will come. We are rather... Yeah, we are very interested in, in, in the subfield or the some kind of thematic strands of the broader field. Okay, do you have some more questions? Because there was also written down some questions, but I think now everything has been answered. So, okay. Anyway, you can join us um, in March as well. You can write, uh, write us, you can call us. Uh, you can you can read the web page. We really tried to specify a lot of things there, and we will be happy to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us.